This video brought to you by our Patreons. Please consider supporting this channel and joining our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash NovaWing24. Hi there folks, my name's NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 4th of April 2021 for another jam-packed episode and happy Easter to everybody if you celebrate and if you don't, well I hope you had a great weekend. Anyway, so we are going to jump straight into it this week with more releases for the sim of the hour starting with developer Milviz with their debut, so not their debut but their uh, latest release in for the new sim with their release of their highly anticipated FG1D Corsair for the sim. Now, for those who might be familiar with Milvis's work, they have previously released this product for Prepared V4 and V5 in the past. Uh, so it comes as no surprise that they took a more uh, experienced, uh, sort of a more recent product of theirs to bring it into the new sim. And I have to say that it looks absolutely stunning. I watched a uh, fellow uh, YouTuber, uh, Oz Flight Simmer, I watched him uh, try and tame the beast, uh, as it were, in a live stream, and it poses to be quite the challenging airframe that it was in real life. I mean, the aircraft is absolutely incredible. It is it is one of the most iconic aircraft of the Second World War, I do believe, with this gullwing design and this whopping great big R2800 double wasp radial at the giant at the front end of it. So, it, it had quite an incredible service record and it's come it's brought to life in variety of uh, real world aviation and sort of various uh, film and TV appearances over the years now this rendition is a highly detailed simulation uh, rendition of the aircraft of a later model of it which is the FG1D variant of that made by Goodyear, I do believe. Uh, so it comes through here with a highly detailed rendition, both internally and externally, with custom superior flight dynamics uh, modeled off the real-world aircraft. Uh, and it does give you quite a number of challenges with being able to uh, for control the aircraft uh, successfully and safely. Uh, as it was, the real aircraft was actually nicknamed uh, the Ensign Eliminator. So just bear that in mind. So uh, just be you know, cautious when you are using the uh, a, uh, the the damage control damage features in this sim now this uh, rendition of it includes a uh, custom sound set produced by sim acoustics with a highly accurate internal and external 3d model full in-depth simulations of uh, all major systems of the aircraft including uh, hydraulics and engine systems includes a uh, war emergency power settings to upgrade power ratings including um, realistic flight dynamics uh, 21 high definition liveries fully functioning dive brake and with a variety of custom night lighting effects as well with optional configurable external fuel tanks drop tanks as well uh, so this aircraft is looking absolutely amazing currently available only from the Milviz store coming in for 40 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Milviz. Continuing on with releases for MSFS this week and moving into the developer Perfect Flight with their latest release of their, uh, shall we call them flight packs? Uh, with their North America IFR mission pack. Um, okay, I'm just going to, Okay, I, I have. Okay, I've got opinions about this. This is, falls into me falls in the same classification as their Euro Wings mission pack, where it's not really a mission pack. It's a bunch of flight plans that they throw together and call it a mission pack. Um, so this is ten routes that have been given to you, plus a uh, American Airlines livery for the default A320 Neo. Um, that's it. Not much with it. Uh, everything else is default sim. So I'm going to leave it with that one. Um, yeah, haven't really got much else to say about that. Really don't. Coming in at 12 bucks uh, from all your regional equivalent available now from Sim Market. Moving in to scenery releases for MSF this week uh, from a developer Prig Dev Company. Uh, so they released this week of their rendition of Liv Danilo Haltes. Oh, I butchered that. I've certainly anyway uniform kilo lima lima, <laughs> um, which is also which is uh, Lviv in Ukraine, uh, which is at the heart of Europe. So this is a rendition of the airport as it appears in March of this year. So it's incredibly recent. This one, uh, including the latest uh, updates to Terminal Caracas uh, and all designed and updated with uh, full modeling of the internals of the major terminal 
includes custom animated jetways, custom ground polygons, as well as uh, full support for the latest uh, air information package with the ILS VOR data and approach plates all included. Full PBR texturing is used throughout with a variety of, uh, with a mix of both internal building modeling and also the parallax window mapping. So to give you a nice combination there. And this one's coming in for 17 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Orbix Direct. Continuing on with airport releases this week's from the team at Aerosoft. So at least this, uh, there's then released a couple of airports this week. The first one is Airport Friedrichshaven. Now, Friedrichshaven for me is kind of interesting. Uh, so this one is on the uh, shores of Lake Constance, sort of bounds both Germany and Austria. Is the home actually of Zeppelin, of Zeppelin NT, uh, the Zeppelin carrier company. So Zeppelin still fly to this day, by the way, folks, just so you know, I really can't wait to see a Zeppelin NT in this new sim. I really want to see that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so this is their home. Uh, so this is the highly detailed re uh, rendition of the airport as it appears in 2020. 21 again, so again, another very, very up-to-date release of March 2021, including up-to-date ground layouts, parking positions, and taxiways as well. Also includes uh, the all airport buildings accurately modeled, uh, including full high-definition 3D, high-def high 3D models and textures. Also includes the Zeppelin NT uh, Hangar and Operations Building, a model of the a static model of the Zeppelin NT, the Dornier Museum with a variety of, of their Dornier uh, aircraft also included as well, as well as a custom terraforming to adapt the exhibition grounds to the default terrain model as well, along with a 3D harbour in the shores of Lake Constance as well. So a lot of bang for your buck for this one coming in for 15 US dollars or your original equivalent available now from Aerosoft. In the other airport release from Aerosoft this week, saw the release this week of Vasakop uh, Airfield, uh, which is the known as the Cradle of Gliding, uh, in the Hessian district of Fulda. Of course, I, I know the full gap from my various studies of Cold War doctrine. But anyway, so this rendition of the airport includes uh, all airport buildings, as well as a variety of custom POIs around the area, including the uh, Ray Dome, which dates back to the Cold War and is now listed as a historical artifact and a historical, uh, historical item as well. Includes uh, custom ortho, uh, ortho photo and photo real imagery for the airport and surrounding area, including full support for seasonal animations for various objects, as well as the uh, point of interest as I said of the radome and the Flieg den Kamal. I'm sure I butchered that today because I've not spent a long time doing my German, uh, including really real, realistic the runway slope profiles, HD textures throughout, and a, and a variety of, and this is what's really interesting for me, this one. Part of the animations of the scenery include gliders flying in the vicinity if weather permits. I want to know more about this. I want to know more about this. I couldn't find any screenshots of it to share with you, but I want to know more about it. It just... I'm perplexed and I'm fascinated. But anyway, so if you wanted to pick this one up, I especially you for the GA pilots, for gliding pilots, for 10 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now from Aerosoft directly. Continuing on with the scenery releases this week from developer Northern Sky Studios of their release of Kapalua Airport uh, in Maui in the in the islands of Hawaii. So this is an airport on the uh, so on the island as I said on the island of Maui. And was the uh, airport that was opened in the late, late 1980s uh, to facilitate after the opening of the Kapalua Resort, just a few more miles to the north, and replacing the previous Kanalap, uh, Kanapali Airport, which closed to allow development along the coastline. Uh, previously, this one it was serviced by Dash 7s before they were retired, now serviced by uh, Cessna 28 Caravans for FedEx and for Hawaiian's uh, subsidiaries. Now, this is a highly detailed, this is actually, um, this is kind of a port from Northern Sky Studios' previous release of this one, um, but still looks really, really good. Includes an up-to-date layout of the airport buildings, and airport, not that airports really change much in that part of the world. Uh, all airport buildings done with full PBR. All PBR materials includes custom surrounders, custom detailed mesh for the airport and surrounding area. A variety of custom ortho, ortho photos have been done for the airport and surrounding areas as well, and a variety of airport clutter included as well. Coming in for 12 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now from Sim Market. In another scenery release, this one from developer Flight Sim Center, who's been pushing out a lot of mixed quality stuff lately. Uh, saw the this week release of Tartu Airport in Estonia. Now there is nothing in their description about this. Um, it looks really basic, is all I'm going to give you. Like they give you two screenshots, and they're very long distance screenshots. And. Um, uh, eight bucks. 
I'm not going to pass any comments further than that because I can't, I can't judge it because I haven't got the quality of images to give you. So eight bucks from flightsim.center available at Sim Market available now. Uh, can you go on with releases from Just Sim with their release of their rendition of uh, Nice Côte d'Azur Airport uh, in France, which also services, of course, the, the Principality of Monaco. This is a straight port of their previously released version of this airport for Prepared V5 um, and Explain 11. Um, uh, while I acknowledge that there are certain features of this, uh, certain features of this airport which are really well done, especially with the ground texturing um, and the of of the ramp, the gate, uh, and the parking, um, a lot of the other stuff I'm looking at and going, how much attention's really been paid to this? And given that this again is one of the um, handcrafted airports that ship with the sim um do those ground markings add enough to this to make it worth the um 25 dollar cost uh that's a that's that's a question only you as a user can answer i can't answer but for me looking at things like with you know various again they're small details but again is this the thing i look for i look for attention to detail in the publicity shots they've released, you know, things like that, the ground artifacts of things like, you know, the, 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 the cars don't match the car parks, the greenery and the green spaces and the building outlines don't match where they are on the photo reel. So I, I've got a question. Um, as I said, this is a straight port. These issues were there in the previous version as well. So, should just sim maybe slow down a little bit and actually start actually putting some spending some time with this and actually correcting issues from the past before trying to rush it out i think that might be a better idea i think it's got the it's got the potential to be a really good add-on but i feel that for the price tag given that this is also a handcrafted airport already from a sobo and given that you're missing glaring details like that it's kind of like well as I said, those kind of details may not work, may not be an issue for you. Uh, but as I said, it's just I look at that and go, okay, if that's what I'm seeing in publicity shots, what else am I not seeing in the publicity shots? So that's my opinion. As I said, if you are want to pick this one up, coming in for twenty five US dollars or your original equivalent value from Sim Market. If you're a previous user of the uh, prepared or X Plane eleven versions, you get a discounted. Um, uh, update price. Uh, your cost may vary. Available now from Sim Market. And rounding out the MSFS releases this week from developer, Australian developer AU Scene uh, saw the release this week of their latest product, and there is a payware quality freeware release of their release of their rendition of Aldinga Airfield in the Vale Wine region in South Australia. And so, a beautiful little regional Australian airport offering biplane rides, great GA services, uh, great for flight training, a great little adventure just to go out, check out the scenery, check out the beautiful parts of the South Australian countryside, and for a lazy flight from from uh, Adelaide. Includes uh, accurate re accurate renditions of the airport as it appears in 2021, including all airport buildings modelled with high-definition textures, highly accurate 3D models, variety of detailed static aircraft, 3D people, interior modelling, and custom placement of vegetation and animated assets with dynamic rain support as well. And coming in, available to you, to you for free from AU Scenes website, available now. Moving out of the MSFS world and moving into the world of Prepared. So this week, two releases for Prepared V4.5 and above. Uh, so the first one we saw released from developer Vertavia with their rendition of the L1049G Super Constellation. Now, this was probably... This hark, this aircraft has always been a fascination for mine. I just... I love the sound of it. I love the size of it. It's just one of those aircraft that really, for me, catches the... The lost classic elements of aviation. It's just an incredible aircraft to fly. I've, I've flown to death the just flight variation of this one. So it's incredible. It's interesting to see this one come to life from the team at Vertavia. So they brought this one to life with the, the variant of the L1049G, which is the final variant, um, the civilian variant of the aircraft. 
developed during the 1950s. And it was introduced in a commercial service um, in uh, by Northwest Airlines on July 1st, 1955. Now, this is a highly detailed rendition of this final variation of the aircraft, so it's supported by both v prepared V4.5 and V5. Includes a full, a highly accurate 3D model, both internally, um, both externally and internally in the cockpit. Includes full support for PVR materials used throughout the aircraft, including full support for 3D gauges, rather than sort of 2D XML gauges. It was a variety of a custom, a full custom, custom sound set used throughout the aircraft, uh, as well as a full support for f uh, 4K and 8K texture support throughout as well. This highly detailed rendition comes to us for 36 US dollars or your original equivalent, available now from Sim Market. In another aircraft release uh, for this week for prepared to be four and be five. Um, and, 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 okay, I, and I'm going to say this one. I'm very disappointed by this one, actually. So this develop, this comes to us from developer Captain Sim with their release uh, into early access of their rendition of the 737 Classic or rather the 737-300 base pack. Now, Captain Sim was a developer that I once had a lot of respect for, but as the last couple of years have gone on, I have slowly but surely lost confidence and respect for their conduct and their abilities um and especially with their other previous airliner fiascos now this particular uh rendition here the 737 300 a classic 737 from uh from captain sim has been hinted at and sort of uh and been in development now for quite a number of years now as i said it finally came to early access and early access is fine i get it it's fine you get that all features are going to be there um, and this is a 737-300 base series. They've said that there will be eventually there will be a 400, a 500, and a freighter expansion coming at some point. Pretty much the same, um, the same sort of state that they've been pushing for various other aircraft over the years. Um, now includes this particular at the time of launch includes 737-300 with CFM 56-3B engines, uh, a variety of different optional equipment including winglets, antennas, etc., etc., etc. A variety of animations, high resolution panels, a variety of 2D panels as well as the 3D support, um, fully functional flight deck uh, with various different sims. I'm not a tube on flight pilot, going to be a bit out of this on this one. Uh, full support for Navigraph FMC data, blah, 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 blah. Here's my issue with it though, is that in the announcement, both in the pre-release before it was released into early access and even post being released into early access, is that it says that there is a retrofit ECAS option or um, it's an EICAS option. So um, to, to do with your flight control systems and your, the engine information, so your engine information systems being digital. Um, now, what was interesting is that it's it was tagged as coming soon, so it won't. It was never going to be there at early access. It was always going to be a feature that comes later on. Now, on the day of launch into early access, and this is a quote. So I'm I'm quoting here from a screenshot that was taken and posted on the FS Elite website here. Um, that the that it, despite the fact that it's been promised and been in black and white that it says retrofit ECAS option coming soon is a release feature for the cockpit for the for this for this add-on. I quote uh, team member Mark Oz from the CS team um, when a user inquired about you know saying that they will they they like the look of it but they were going to wait for the ERKS retrofit um, for the aircraft before they would purchase it. Quoting Mark Oz from the CS team, I'm not so sure that the EICAS re retrofit will happen anytime soon, if at all. So good luck with the waiting. That's complete bullshit. If you are going to pull a feature that you've already advertised, own it, make a statement, and pull it from the damn product information. As of the time of recording of this video, the Captain Sim website still says that that feature is coming soon. So, Captain Sim, what are you playing at? Once upon a time, I highly respected you and your work. You've done incredible, fantastic work over the years. Um, the C-130 of yours was my favorite aircraft to fly in FSX for many, many, prepared for many, many years. Um, and to see what you've become is incredibly disappointing. So own it, 
make a statement to the to the flight sim community and be upfront and be honest and be transparent. And that's all I'm going to say with that one. And that rounds out the prepared news. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any X-Plane releases this week uh, to report on. So uh, apologies if, if there was something. If there was, please let me know in the comments and let me know. And I'll try to include it next week. But we'll move now into other releases, uh, into another release for the flight, sim flight simulation genre of Helicopter Simulator VR 2021. Now, this is an early access title that just launched on Steam uh, and looks different um it's probably going to uh, i'm probably going to say that it's, it's probably you know nothing that we are probably normally used to but it looks at the same time if you peel back what it initially looks like on the sur on the surface of being very game like it looks like it has the potential to be something fairly groundbreaking the biggest thing that i notice is the use of the in the vr of the use of the hand controllers do you actually hold and you actually control the collective and the stick um using uh, your um uh, hand motion your motion controllers so that I find really really interesting uh, and it was something that's uh, it would got potential to be done but not done enough in flight sims so um, while it looks very arcadey at the moment and there are a lot of mixed reviews coming about it on Steam at the moment I think this has a long way to go. Now, in terms of uh, what it's offering, it, it offers a sandbox you know, in a Alpine-esque environment. It offers you 12 advanced missions, uh, six different helicopter deliveries of what is looks like it's supposed to be a Robinson R-22, but obviously they don't have licensing from Robinson about it, so they've called it something else. Um, and it's built and it's made by enthusiasts with a fully dynamic uh, aerodynamic controls, fully dynamic weather engine. Sorry, not dynamic weather engine. You set the uh, weather conditions that you want. Uh, everything from clear sunny skies all the way to full winter storms. So it looks rather interesting. Um, as I said, I'm going to leave it to the more helicopter uh, efficient people to have a, to have a review of and leave, let, let them know their thoughts on it. Um, I'd be interested to see if uh, Helisima covers it. I have passed it on to them, so but there you go. If you are wanting to pick this one up and give it a try yourself, you're looking at um, about 15 US dollars or your original equivalent available now on Steam. Moving out of the world of flight simulation and moving to the world of the permanent way. I saw this week the Route 4 Train Simulator released this week the rendition of LMS Stainer Mogul Steam Locomotive. So this was a highly powerful mixed traffic design uh, built for the built and uh, designed and built into the 1930s, uh, and would go on and prove uh, to be a solid performer of Great Western Railways for many years, well into the 1950s. Uh, sadly, only one of them survived into preservation, but that one has now been recreated for the renditions in a Train Simulator. So it gives us a highly detailed rendition of the Stainer Mogul 260 locomotive, including in both the Fowler and Stainer Trent Tender variants includes uh, both British Rail uh, and LMS livery variants, includes a variety of uh, rolling stock to suit the, suit the time period as well, along with three career scenarios for the West Somerset Rail Route included as well. And if you wanted to pick this one up, you can pick this one up for 20 US dollars or your original equivalent available now on Steam. Moving from the permanent way and moving onto the road with OMSI 2 releasing their latest bus this week with the Man Stud Bus New Lions City uh, line of buses being released this week. This includes six different versions of the latest Man, uh, uh, man bus to be able to uh, release for the sim. Uh, includes uh, the 12C, 12C two-door variant, 12C three-door, 18C three-door, 18C four-door, and 19C three and four-door variants all included with a variety of engine configurations and two different transmission options available. Also includes a variety of liveries suitable for many of the well-known maps, including Munich, Aachen, Berlin, uh, and others. Well, also including a full repaint templates and courses as well. Full support for LED and daytime running lights, as well as night light included as well, and high resolution uh, textures included throughout. Also includes uh, update. Also, an update is planned uh, for a variety of real world and prototype versions planned into the future. Now, if you want to add this one to your collection, you can add this one for eighteen US dollars or your original equivalent. Available now on Steam. 
And finally, rounding out the simulation release news this week for the simulation of a very different kind this week uh, for Planet Zoo uh, releasing their latest uh, animal pack this week with their release of their Southeast Asia animal pack. Now, this adds, uh, adds in a brand new scenario as well as eight new animals adding to your zoo experience, including the Sun Bear, Clouded Leopard, Malaysian Taper, Proboscis Monkey, North Sulawesi, Babrusa, Binturong, uh, Usuri Dihole, and Giant Leaf Insect. Okay, I have no idea what that second last one was, but it sounds terrifying. Anyway, uh, also includes habitats and a variety of other exhibition and content included here as well. Also includes a new custom scenario to help a real-life... Uh, um, uh, nature reserve as well to be able to bring to life there and support their work as well so looking pretty cool um and so must admit though this is the most bumper um edition of planet zoo like dlc i've seen for a long time normally you only get sort of like three animals uh three or four animals so this is significant for this one and the community is definitely seems to be loving it so that's kind of cool and kind of interesting if you want to pick this one up you can pick this one up for 10 us dollars or your original equivalent available now on steam and with that, that now rounds out the Nova app for this week. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget as always to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between your videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter and on Twitch. Just search NovaWing24. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe guys to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.